Coming up, tornadoes in severe weather ripped through Ohio overnight, leaving a trail of damage and devastation in their wake. Meanwhile, one person is dead and at least 19 others are injured following a mass stabbing in Japan. We'll bring you the latest. And family and friends remember a Pike County Sheriff's deputy killed while working on a job site. Good morning. It is 558 on Tuesday, May the 28th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning into Mountain News this morning. Well, we had mentioned it just a little bit ago. Things got very hairy to our neighbors to the north in Ohio around 11 o'clock last night, and they're going to be waking up to some almost unimaginable damage. Brandon was keeping track of it, was listening to the scanner all night, and Brandon, you said things were just ridiculous. Luckily, we were spared here at home, but our thoughts and prayers are with those to the north. Exactly, and I listened to the uh, Montgomery County, Ohio scanner traffic for about an hour. They couldn't get anywhere. First responders were struggling. They were trying to get through down trees, down power lines. People were trapped in buildings and they couldn't get to them. So it was uh, chaotic there. They were managing as best they could, but they were calling for mutual aid from everybody. So daylight this morning is going to be a uh, surreal scene, I'm sure, up into the Dayton area and down toward uh, even Columbus had some tornado warnings last night. So let's take a look and see what's going on here at home this morning. We'll talk more about what's going on or what went on up to our north here in a little bit. Stonecrest Golf Course, pretty quiet right now. Again, maybe a few high clouds in some locations. Satellite radar loop for the last few hours. No major issues there. We're just seeing, again, a little bit of rain came through overnight in some areas to our north, uh, especially down toward Parkersburg and just north of Charleston there, moving away toward Elkins. Temperatures very mild and very muggy this morning. We'll mention it earlier that it's so muggy out there. It's air you can wear this morning. Temperatures in the 70s and a lot of low locations are very close to it, but some mid 60s there, low to mid 60s down toward the Cumberland Valley, 64 Harlan, 62 Middlesboro and 63 in Jonesville right now. Temperature change over the last little bit, several degrees warmer, only one spot where it's a little bit cooler, actually two spots, a degree, or a degree cooler rather in Ashland and in Middlesboro. Wind speeds again picking up out of the southwest. That's bringing in that warmer air. Planner for today, 88 this afternoon. When you factor in the heat index, it'll feel closer to 90 or just above. So make sure you're staying hydrated. All right, the rest of that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, overnight, we've mentioned a couple times, a large and dangerous tornado hit about eight miles away from Dayton, Ohio, near the town of Trotwood. According to the National Weather Service, trees were uprooted, power lines knocked down, and entire homes destroyed. I'm laying there shaking. Uh, my head's up against the wall and the wall shaking back and forth. There's wind from the tornadoes pushing through up through the vent into my face and I'm freaking out sitting there. It lasts about, I'd say 10 to 15 seconds, scariest 15 seconds of my life. Crews are using snow plows to try to bring to try to clear debris off highways, which is difficult work in pitch black darkness. Towns throughout central Indiana were also heavily damaged by those storms across the border in Indiana. Severe weather struck just north of Indianapolis Monday night, leaving damage officials believe was caused by a tornado. Here's a look at some of it in the city of Macy in Miami County. There was also damage reported in Pendleton. Survey teams will be out later today to confirm whether it was all caused by tornado or just strong winds. Elsewhere, at least 12 people have been killed in severe storms across the plains and Midwestern states after days of devastation. Meredith Wood has the latest. Holy cow. A massive EF1 twister caught on camera tearing through Charles City, Iowa, damaging 11 structures. Just one of dozens reported across several states over the holiday weekend in a relentless and deadly tornado outbreak that is showing no signs of letting up. More than 170 tornadoes reported in just the last week. It's just unbelievable how violent and you just can't imagine anybody being able to survive. So I know we've got people that are fighting for their lives in, in OU Medical Center right now. A state of emergency for the entire state of Oklahoma that's been hit extremely hard in the past several days. People that were on the top floor of that hotel, uh, it was just kind of wiped out. And when we saw the trailers, they're just completely demolished. One had the floor there, but a lot of them just kind of were just kind of it looked like they were blown up. This mass devastation in El Reno caused by an EF3 tornado. We've got water still rising in the east, uh, so we're not out of the woods yet. It still could get worse. Widespread floods have swallowed entire communities 
forcing more than a thousand people from their homes in Tulsa. There's no proper reaction to this. Um, you feel everything. Um, you feel sad. You feel angry. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. In other developing news this morning, at least two people, including the suspect, are dead and at least 19 others are injured following a mass stabbing at a bus stop just outside of Tokyo. It happened early Monday. Witnesses reports re witnesses report say the attacker approached a group of children with a knife in each hand screaming, I will kill you. We are told one of those children was killed. P President Trump, who is in Japan on a state visit, offered his condolences to the Japanese people. I want to take a moment to send our prayers and sympathy to the victims of the stabbing attack this morning in Tokyo. All Americans stand with the people of Japan and grieve for the victims and for their families. Media, re media reports state the suspect was detailed by police but died after stabbing himself in the neck. A Laurel County family is still grieving this morning after losing their son just weeks after graduation. Zach Abner graduated earlier this month from the University of the Cumberlands. The Laurel County native died Sunday after going kayaking on the Rock Castle River. Listen to how his coach describes him. He's always had that smile. If he didn't, then you knew something was wrong. But 99% of the day, he had that great smile. He, he was a talkative part. I mean, he loved to talk. You, sometimes you couldn't make him be quiet. He was a great leader on the football team. I mean, kids really followed him, and he, he was just, I would never forget the way he looked and his smile that he always had. And uh, just, it, it's all, I mean, it's awful. Family members say Zach graduated with a degree in criminal justice and wanted to become a Kentucky State Police Trooper. He had planned to join the next cadet class. At least nine climbers have died on Mount Everest so far during the 2019 climbing season. Earlier last week, crowds of climbers became stuck in a line to the summit above the mountain's highest camp in more than 26,000 feet. Images posted to social media show the long lines in an area known as the death zone due to the dangerously low levels of oxygen. Many climbers express concerns that the wait time is making the journey even riskier. However, Nepalese tourism authorities said suggestions like that said suggestions that the deaths were related to the heavy traffic at the summit were baseless since regulations to control climber traffic were in place. Meanwhile, a survivor of April's mass shooting on the campus of the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, is back home. Drew Pescaro posted this video on Twitter Sunday. He thanked all those who have supported him, but noted he still has a long road to recovery. Pescaro was one of six students shot on April 30th. Two were killed and Pescaro and three others were hurt. Pescaro has had at least three surgeries and he has not been able to walk on his own again until two weeks after the shootings. Meanwhile, two teenage girls were hit by a train late Sunday night in Louisville. Police found them around 930. One was dead while the other was rushed to the hospital in serious condition. Police say the train was from Norfolk Southern. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, three people, including two teenagers, were killed in an ATV wreck Sunday. Officials in Campbell County, Tennessee, say one other person was flown to a hospital. The four apparently drove off a 100-foot cliff. Authorities say the four were originally from North Carolina and were vacationing in the area for Memorial Day weekend. A Laurel County woman is behind bars after deputies say she drank a pint of brandy and wrecked a car with an 11 year old kid inside. Deputies say the Laurel deputies with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office say 42 year old Robin Sizemore now faces multiple charges, including wanton endangerment. Nobody was injured in the wreck, but police say they could smell the alcohol on Sizemore. The child was taken to other family members by social services. A Pike County Sheriff's deputy died Friday afternoon. A tree fell into the cab of an excavator, killing Danny Taylor while working on a job site in the Little Robinson Creek community. Taylor played many roles like Pike County Sheriff's deputy and worked for the road department. Those who knew him say he was a hard worker and who loved his family and friends. He's worked two or three different jobs all at the same time. We loved him and we will miss him very much. Visitation for Danny Taylor will be tonight at 6 at the Lucas and Son Funeral Home. A church service is at 7 on Wednesday, and his funeral will be held Thursday at 2 p.m.
Well, the forecast this morning, not too bad as we head out the door. Let's take a look and see what's going on at UVA wise as daylight approaches. And again, no major issues. Maybe just a few clouds this morning. No fog there. There is some patchy dense fog across parts of the area. Mountain Parkway also quiet this morning at Slade in Powell County. Last few hours on the satellite radar. Again, just a few clouds. All the rain stayed off to our north last night. Showers, storms and severe weather up toward Dayton and over toward Columbus down into parts of southern and southeastern North Ohio and into West Virginia as well. Temperature is a little cooler in the Cumberland Valley, 62 there, Middlesbrough 64 in Harlan, closer to 70, Monticello, London, Jackson, and over toward Prestonsburg, Pikeville, and Moorhead as well across the state. 74 right now, Bowling Green, 73, Paducah, and Nashville, 72, Lexington, and 67 in Charleston, West Virginia. 88 this afternoon, a little bit of a southwest breeze, but mainly calm, sunny skies, and hot and humid conditions will be on tap for us as we go deeper into the day. Will. All right, Brandon, thank you. And thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, the TSA has released an update to changes to their medical marijuana policies, such as what people can bring on board when they fly. And a new study found that e-cigarette flavors can cause potentially threatening damage to your health.